was late at night in the suburban district of a Midwestern city. And long after their neighbors had gone to sleep, Mr. and Mrs. LaCosta were digging a deep hole in their backyard. It's just crazy, Paul. It's just crazy putting all this money in the ground. Where else can I put it? In a savings bank? Where it can be traced by the treasury agents? Or in a bank vault? People can find out about that, too. Do you want the income tax people to find out what I've done? The whole neighborhood will find out if you don't keep your voice down. Well, all right, then. Leave me alone. Now give me that and let me get finished. Honey, please. Why do we have to bury all of it? Couldn't we just keep half of it for ourselves? There's so much we could do. There's so much we could... We can't do anything, Marie. I've told you a hundred times we can't spend this money. We can't even touch it. What good is it, then? What good is money you have to keep in the ground? In order to avoid the full payment of income taxes, there are many people in this country who will go to great lengths to conceal their wealth and their earnings from agents of the Internal Revenue Service, even if it means depriving themselves of the use of that money by burying it in the ground. And now, in my role as Chief of the Intelligence Division, Internal Revenue Service, I want to tell you about just such a case in which a man waited five years to outsmart the Treasury Department only to learn that he had outsmarted himself. This is Treasury File 3192, Internal Revenue Service. The case of the buried treasure. Five years, Paul. Five years. It's like a lifetime. When you first buried that money out there, I figured it'd be one, two, three at the most. But five. Well, you quit talking about it all the time. Every night I come home, it's the same thing. That money out there, money, money. I can't even eat a decent meal without being reminded of it. I've told you a thousand times, it's not safe to dig it up yet. Why isn't it safe? How much longer do we have to go on like this? Living like we didn't have a dime. Never buying anything decent for the house. Never going anywhere, wearing the same old clothes. I can't even have my teeth fixed because you won't let me spend a hundred dollars. We can't spend more than I make, Marie. We can't afford to attract attention. Why, if you buy new clothes or fix the house up, people will talk. And if the income tax people find out we've been spending a lot of money, they'll wonder where it came from. They'll start checking on me all over again. How can they check? How many times can they go over your returns? How do I know what they can do? You know what happened before when we buried the money. Every other week, they kept calling me down there, checking my books, asking me questions, wanting all kinds of information. It was different then. You ran a gambling joint. You had lottery games and slot machines. They didn't trust you. Well, so why should they trust me now? Because you're legitimate now, Paul. You run a legitimate dry goods store. They're not watching you like they used to. No. Well, every day you're reading the paper about guys that get caught. Guys like me that gypped on their income tax. They go to jail for what they did three or four years ago. I don't care, Paul. I don't care anymore. I can't go on like this, waiting, worrying. Knowing we get all that money out there and not being able to use it. For five long years I've waited, Paul. Now I want some fun. I want some nice clothes. I want to take care of my teeth. We got a fortune in the backyard and I can't even bite into food because... Because... <laughs> Maybe we have been a little too careful with the money. Maybe we can dig it up now and spend a little without people noticing. At least you can get your teeth fixed. Yeah, get the house painted. And maybe buy a couple of new dresses. You mean that, Paul? Well, why not? After all, it's been five years. We're entitled to have a little fun. <laughs> And so, after five long years, the money which Paul LaCosta had hidden from the world was brought up from the earth. 
Only remember, we're not going to spend all of this. I just said we could use part of it, maybe a thousand dollars or so. Yeah, I know, I know. Yes, and we got to be careful about how we spend it. No charge accounts in the department store. We got to pay cash for everything we buy. All right, Paul. How many times are you going to tell me? Yes, but I just want to make sure. You know, after all these years, I'm. What's the matter? I don't know. Some kind of moss or something all over the wrapper. Moss? Yeah. Look, the same kind of stuff's on the bills. What is it? Won't it wipe off? Careful. They're all soggy. They're all soggy. They... There's little black holes in them. Well, is it in all of them? Maybe it's just the top one. Hmm? No, they're all like this. All stuck together. Something must have gotten inside the bag, some kind of mold. Oh, Paul. Oh, be careful, will you? They'll rip. They'll fall apart. They're still good, aren't they? I mean, it's still good money. Sure, sure, they're good. Only what can you do with them? How can you handle bills like this? How can you buy anything with them? Now, look. They come apart if you... Hardly touch them. Other people have gotten damaged bills before. What do they do with them? Doesn't the bank take them? Won't the government give us new ones? You want me to go to the government with these? You want me to tell them what we've been doing? Well, you don't have to tell them what don't we've been doing. Don't be a fool. You bury money in the ground. It's for one reason. It's because you've been hiding it. Now, don't you think they'd know that? Well, they wouldn't have to know how much How we... much? How much? I can't tell them we've been hiding anything. You want them to search this place? What are you going to do? Oh, for shut up, will you? Give me a chance to think a minute. Five years we waited for this money. Five years we left it in the ground so we wouldn't have to pay taxes. And now what happens? We can't even use it. We got to use it, Paul. We gotta hold it together some way. With paste, with tape. If we can't go to the bank, we gotta exchange it. We gotta cash it in in the stores a little at a time. Two hundred thousand dollars? Well, what else are you gonna do with it? Let it lay around here and rot? We gotta use this money, Paul. After all these years, we just gotta use this money. That the smallest you have? Look, Pete, I'm not trying to put one over on you. If you have any trouble with it at the bank, I'll make it good. Okay, Paul. 175 out of 50. There you are. Thanks, Pete. See ya. Encouraged by the successful transaction at the drugstore, Paul and Marie began to spread the buried bills around town. Within two months, they disposed of $3,000, receiving merchandise and other currency in exchange. The bills, along with other mutilated and worn out currency, were retired from circulation and sent to the nearest Federal Reserve Bank. Eventually, the money reached the Treasury Department in Washington, D.C the Office of the Currency Redemption Division. There, the technicians discovered that all these bills had been damaged by a mold from the same type of fungus. The report was assigned to Special Agent Tom Gilchrist for further study, and within a few days, he reported back to me. And you think there's a possibility of income tax evasion on the part of the person who buried them, eh? Well, it's a little early to tell anything yet. But with $3,000 worth of these bills coming in in such a short time, and all of them 50s, there might be a great deal more where they came from. Well, is there any definite lead as to the source of the bills? Yes, some very good leads. 
I've been checking with the Federal Reserve Bank who's been receiving these bills. And they said they were all coming in from local banks in Omaha, Nebraska. So I contacted those banks by telephone. And in several instances, the tellers remember who the depositors were who brought those bills in. Well, there were several people who deposited them. Yes, sir. Tradespeople mostly. A grocer, a druggist, a beauty parlor operator. The money seems to have been exchanged in a good many places. By the same person? That's what I want to find out, Chief. Who that person is. And why he's going to all the trouble to try to cash these $50 bills. Especially when the currency redemption division will be glad to redeem them. Well, all right, Gilchrist. And your next stop is Omaha, Nebraska. Gilchrist visited several of the people who had deposited the mutilated bills at banks in Omaha. And from them, he learned that the money had come originally from two respected neighbors, Paul and Marie LaCosta. Moore, do you think it's safe to pass any more of these bills? Well, what else are we going to do with them? Wait till they get so bad we can't even patch them up? All we've passed is $3,000 worth. Yeah, but we've been to every store in town. So we'll go around again. We'll go to different towns. There's still $197,000, Paul. $197,000. Do you want it to go to waste, or do you want to see if we can't get some of it back? I don't know what I want, Marie. These last couple of weeks, I haven't even been able to think straight, like there was something buzzing around in my head. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. All that money, Marie. All the work I did to get it in the first place, taking chances with big-time gangsters, breaking the laws to pile it up and then not using it for five years. That money was me that was in the ground. Yeah, we lost five years, Marie, five years out of our lives. Will you stop saying we lost it? We can still get most of it back if you'll just stop sitting there holding your head. Well, come on, change a couple of more bills. Get something for those headaches of yours. I can't do this all alone, Paul. Another one of those fifties? You have any trouble with the other one? Not at the bank. But there was a man in here today from the Treasury Department. What do you want? He was asking about that other fifty. I told him you gave it to me. Oh, uh... Look, Pete, I, uh, yeah, there's just the right amount of change. No use bothering you with such a big bill. Hey, you forgot your pills. My name is Paul Acosta, and for the past few years, he's been operating a dry goods store in Omaha, Nebraska. And both he and his wife have been passing these bills, eh? Well, yes, sir. What's the story on their tax returns, Gilchrist? Well, sir, about five years ago, Lacoste and his wife operated an illegal gambling casino. Before they were closed down, it was thought they made a good bit of money. Did you, uh, did you run a check on them? Yes, sir. They were under investigation for over a year after the casino was closed. And although their books always appeared to be in order, the tax examiner was suspicious enough to order a preliminary investigation. And one was actually made. Oh, yes, I see the report here. Well, that's the first one, Chief. And evidently, LaCosta wasn't living beyond his means when that report was made. So after three periodic checks in his financial status, the investigation was dropped because of lack of evidence. However, at this time, I recommend reopening it. By all means, Gilchrist. Track down some of his old employees at the casino and some of his old gambling friends. Because the bills themselves may not be enough, unless we can prove that he's got a great many more of them. In an effort to find out a good deal more about Paul Acosta's hidden earnings, Agent Gilchrist checked the employment records of the gambling casino which Lacosta and his wife formerly operated. Finding these former employees and attempting to obtain information from them was a thankless and not too successful job. However, Gilchrist did manage to learn from one former employee that Lacosta had one source of income which had never appeared in his tax returns a numbers lottery, which was operated on a strictly cash and unrecorded basis. Hi, Paul. What's the matter? Oh, it's that buzzing again. It's my ears. It's there all the time now. Like there was a switchboard in there. Somebody was ringing my number. Paul, you've got to get some sleep. You don't get enough rest anymore. Even when you're in bed, you just lie there with your eyes wide open. Or you keep tossing all night long. 
It's ours, Marie. They can't take it away from us. Take what away from us, Paul? What are you talking about? The money. I've been trying to figure it out, how we can patch it up so it won't look like there's anything wrong with it. If we could just fill in those holes with something, if we could just make it look right, well, then we could take it away someplace and spend it, just like we always figured we were going to. Paul, you got to stop worrying about it. I'll take care of the money. No, I'll get it fixed up, Marie. I'll figure out a way to make it look like new. Look, I got a better way of unloading it. Hmm? What do you mean? I thought of it on the way home. Instead of exchanging it ourselves, we sell it to somebody else and let him exchange it. I don't get you. Who'd buy money from us, money in this condition? Who'd want to take a chance on redeeming it? For a profit? Why not? In the old days, we used to know lots of people who'd go for a deal like that. How about some of those hoods and confidence men that used to come into the casino? How about Harry Jasper? He'd take a commission on any kind of a job. Hmm. He'd take your right arm, too. Well, we'd have to pay him something, Paul. It'd be worth it. For 15 or 20 percent, he might be able to get rid of every bill we got. No, I'll get rid of them, Marie. I'll figure out a way to make them look like new. Paul, will you stop talking like a fool? A man like Jasper can help us. I'm going to go see him. I'm going to find out where he is and try to make a deal with him. Now, wait a minute. It's the best way, I tell you. Right now, it's the only way. So you buried 200 grand in the ground, and it came up looking like Swiss cheese. It's tough luck, kid, real tough luck. Should have come to me instead of burying it. I'd have invested it for you in one of my enterprises. Well, we weren't looking for an investment, Harry. We were just trying to keep what we had. That's what we're trying to do now, keep it. Most of it, anyway. Yeah, and you want me to take some of it off your hands, huh? Well, as much as you think you can handle. It's as good as gold, Harry. Not quite. There's a lot of work involved getting rid of this kind of dough. You gotta have a lot of passes spread it out. It's like a counterfeiting deal. Otherwise, you could get into a lot of trouble. You've organized a lot of deals like this, Harry. You, you organized the, the numbers bracket for Paul when we had the casino. It isn't like I, I, I want you to do it for nothing. I'll, I'll give you 20% on every bill you can get rid of. It's not enough. How much do you want? Well, I'll tell you, Marie. I've always gotten by in this world because I've always remembered one very important rule. Always kick a man when he's down. So I guess we can do a little business. Only instead of you giving me 20 cents in the dollar, I'll just turn that around a little and uh, I'll give you 20 cents in the dollar. 20 cents? 20 cents is a lot of dough compared to nothing at all. The way I got it figured, you and Paul are going to go to the coolie to try to pass any more of that dough. And 20% of all the bills you got is a nice piece of change. I won't do it. Okay. Take the deal elsewhere and see where it'll get you. We could give it back to the government. We could tell them we made a mistake and pay the tax on it. Sure. And you could go to jail, too. And pay a nice little fine in the bargain. With interest. Yeah, you could do that if you wanted to. That'd be okay. Only if you want to play ball with me, you'd wind up with a nice, neat little bankroll. All in fresh, clean bills that you could use any time you wanted to. What do you say? You'll take all of it? Well, not in one hunk. You can bring me uh, 50 grand as a start. I'll see how it works. If it works out OK, I'll take the rest. All right. It's a deal. Harry Jasper? Yes, I'll see what I can find on Jasper and send it to you. No, Currency Redemption hasn't turned up any more of those patched up 50s, but with this new development, there could be some action. Well, stick to it, Gilchrist, and continue the surveillance on the Lacostas. Marie, you didn't. You 
couldn't give him all that money, not for 20 cents on the dollar. He paid in cash, Paul. $10,000. $10,000 that are good that we can use. And there'll be almost 30,000 more if it works out right. Right. How can it be right to give away all that money for one-fifth of what it's worth? You're not going to take the rest of it, Marie. I'm warning you, you're not going to get another penny of it. We'll see, Paul. We'll see how it works out. As far as Harry Jasper was concerned, the deal appeared to be working out fine. By hiring several men who had past records for passing counterfeit money, and others who had worked for him in the numbers racket, the mutilated $50 bills were now being distributed on a large-scale basis. But each of these passers was subsequently questioned about Jasper's current activities as well as his past association with Paul and Marie Lacosta and the case against them began to take shape. Meanwhile, the Lacostas had an unexpected visitor. Hi, Harry. You want the money? You want us to give you the rest of the money? That's right, Marie. You crook, you dirty crook. We won't sell it to you. Besides, I got a way of fixing it up now, like new. Don't listen to him, Harry. It doesn't work. It does, I tell you. Just as soon as I get it perfected, it'll look just like new. Paul, will you please bring out the rest of the money? I won't sell, not for less than 90 cents on the dollar. Don't listen to him, Harry. He doesn't know what he's doing anymore. Oh, I'll have no dealings with this man. Paul, if we give him the rest of the money, he'll pay us $30,000. Wait a minute. I didn't come here to buy anything. That money has to be destroyed. Destroyed? What for? Because we're all in a jam, including me. On account of those patched up 50s that I bought from you, those treasury boys are going to use that evidence against me. Why? What happened? Look. I spread over a hundred of those patched up 50s all over the country. No kickbacks. Everything went smooth. And then it hit me. What? Why do you want to destroy the rest of the money? I got a letter in this morning's mail from the United States Treasury Department. Internal Revenue Service. About us? Not a word about you. Just a polite little request asking me to come in and answer some routine questions about my tax returns for a few years ago. About the years you worked with Paul on the numbers? Yeah, the years you made 200 grand that you buried in the earth and it came up full of holes. You gave them positive evidence that you had money hidden somewhere. And I'm in the middle of it all. They'll know I made plenty, too. Well, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to get my hands on that rotten money of yours and burn it up. Now, hand it over. Burn it? You're not going to burn my money. Look, it's the only chance for both of us. We can't give them any more evidence. If they find that money here, we'll all go to jail. It's mine, it's mine, and you're not going to get your hands on it. Don't be a fool. I'm trying to save you from a stretch. Paul, give him the money. No, I won't do it. I'm afraid you'll have to, Paul. You didn't make any dough on any numbers deal with me. Now, where is it? In the kitchen, in the flour canister. Move. You'll have to kill me first. Oh, don't be a fool. What's that? The United States Treasury Department. Open the door, please. Treasury Department, I'd like to talk to you and your husband, man. I'd like to talk to you about your income tax, Mr. LaCosta. My money. You can't have my money. Paul, they're from the Treasury Department. No, you're lying to me, all of you. That's because I got the money. Will you shut up? And I'm gonna bury it, too, in the ground. And as soon as it's safe, we'll dig it up and spend it, Marie and me. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it. Spend it. of his money had finally driven Paul Lacosta's frightened and confused mind into a complete breakdown. He was committed to a mental institution and the criminal case against him was never prosecuted. However, Marie Lacosta, who shared his guilt in their willful efforts to defraud the government, was tried and convicted and sentenced to two years in a federal penitentiary. Evidence subsequently obtained against Harry Jasper resulted in a prison sentence for him also. And the buried treasure of $200,000 was completely dissipated as far as the Lacostas were concerned, since back taxes, penalties, interest, court costs, and fines consumed every dollar of it. 